Hey, how's it going? Let's check out this cool little cabinet I've made to house all my retro video game consoles. In my first Games Room Tour video, there was originally nothing on this wall, so there was no way to play video games in a Games Room, which kind of defeats the purpose. But I've since built this, so let's go over some of the basic features of it and why it's so cool. All right, so overall, it's 127 centimeters long, it's 46 centimeters from the top to the bottom, and it's 38 centimeters deep. It's all made from recyclable materials, which is really cool and it has four different compartments which I'm housing all my consoles. So at the moment I have my Nintendo and my two mini consoles, I have my Super Nintendo, my Nintendo 64, and then finally my GameCube and my Wii. At the back of each of the compartments there's an air vent which also doubles for my cable management. All the cords are running through the back of the cabinet and then they're going up to two different holes drilled at the top of the cabinet, then feed into the splitter box so I can change consoles and then all the AV and component cables go into the back of the TV. Great thing being is I can just switch between any console that I wanna play at a moment's notice. Along the three front vertical supports, there's a tiny little hole up the top, which allows me to run an LED light strip through. You can't see it, but you still get that nice LED glow. The back of each compartment has a false wall. It doesn't actually go all the way back to the 38 centimeter depth. It only goes back about three quarters of the way. And then that leaves me an additional cabinet on the other side where I can house all the cable management and all the power supplies so they can all be hidden away, which then allows me to put the cabinet flush up against the wall to let me really maximize the space in this tiny room. So let's talk about the design phase. This room is so small, it's two and a half meters squared and it's got heaps of stuff in it. So I have to really think about how I can go about maximizing every possible millimeter to get the most out of the space and the most stuff in the space. So in addition to making sure that I designed each cabinet to house each individual console and make sure there was ample airflow and room on top if I wanted to pull a cartridge out, I also had to consider the height of the TV combined with the overall height of the cabinet and then making sure those two measurements together didn't exceed the height to the bottom of the window. The window has since been removed in this room and I've put another cabinet up there to house other Nintendo things, but that's for another video. But still, I had to consider that. So I actually just found the original sketches that I was doing when coming up with the design for this. And right from the get-go, you can see that I had the idea of having a false, false section at the back to house all the power cords. But what's interesting here is that at one point I was toying with having this entire top section be on a piano hinge of some kind so it would lift up so I could then get down in to access all the cords. And yeah, I'm glad I didn't go with that. Here's my first crude drawing of the design and I was obviously deciding how many different cubbies I would have. On. Yeah, so it's interesting to think that it went from this to this. In the back little secret compartments, I had to consider the overall dimensions of the various power bricks and make sure there was enough space both to mount them and have all the cables run and still be adequate ventilation so none of those power supplies got too hot. On the adjoining walls of those cabinets, I've also made sure that I've recessed that vertical support a bit so there's plenty of room for all the cables to run through. I'm also a bit of a neat freak, so I've considered vacuuming the room when designing the height of the legs. So the legs are positioned in such a way where the distance from the floor allows me to get my little stick vacuum underneath there and vacuum with no problems. I've also recessed the legs in from the bottom of the cabinet just enough so it allows the cabinet to sit flush up against the wall without the legs butting into the skirting boards. Once again, I'm trying to maximize every single millimeter in this tiny little room. So let's talk about cable management, every gamer's favorite part of having lots of retro consoles. So when I want to adjust anything, I simply just slide the cabinet away from the wall so I can get at the little secret compartments that house all the cable management. 
I know the back of the console can't be seen, but I still wanted to make sure it was clean and organized. If nothing else, just to make it easy for me if I needed to get to any of the cords or if I wanted to change something around in the future. To make this more modular, I've used a series of hooks and Velcro straps to mount everything and to make everything easy to arrange. And then all of those cords are then feeding up into a switcher box for the NES, the SNES and the 64. And they're all sharing the same AV input on the TV. The Wii is going into the component and the mini consoles are going into the HDMI. On top of the cabinet for decoration, I've got these two little piranha plants made from perla beads that a local artist made. And then I also have these two acrylic boxes, which are old makeup display boxes. And they have my Voltron statue and one of my Mario Maker statues on top. In hindsight, having to consider the height of the window combined with the TV has resulted in making this cabinet quite low to the ground. But I actually really like that because it forces you to sit on the ground while you're playing, which is how I used to play video games all the time when I was a kid. Also being so low to the ground, it's actually great for playing with our kids, which is really fun when we bring our two kids in the room and we can share the hobby of gaming with them as well. Overall, I'm stoked with this cabinet. It fits my unique needs for the consoles I want to set up and the unique dimensions and space of this room really well. If I could change anything, I'd probably just drill an additional tiny little hole at the back of this cubby right here so I could run the LED lights to the back so you don't see the little excess of them hanging out the side. Um, but that's something I could do later on and just putty up the original hole I had there, so it's not a big deal. So there you have it, my custom made cabinet from my tiny games room with four cubbies housing everything from my original Nintendo up to the Wii. And I think it's pretty cool. Thanks for watching.